Hello and welcome to this edition of the Alaska Report. I'm Senator Lisa Murkowski. With campuses stretching from the tip of the panhandle to the Arctic Circle, the University of Alaska system is our state's flagship institution of higher learning, serving nearly 33,000 full and part-time students. Now, as my guest this month, I've asked University President Mark Hamilton to come and talk about what's happening these days across the UA system. Mark became the 12th president of the University of Alaska system in August of 1998, and he's overseen a period of growth and really excitement within the university's 16 campuses. In addition to providing outstanding educational opportunities for students, the university is an economic engine in the state, bringing an estimated $1 billion to Alaska's economy. Over a decade of service now, Mark has announced his retirement. He's going to be leaving his post once a new president is chosen. Before leaving the University of Alaska system, uh, I think it's important to, to understand who Mark Hamilton is, his background. President Hamilton served for 31 years in the U.S. Army, retiring as Major General in 1998. And while in the service, President Hamilton was in charge of national recruiting during the Army's Be All That You Can Be era. Mark is the recipient of the Distinguished Service Medal, the Army's highest peacetime award, along with many, many other awards of achievement in both the military and the academic world. So it's an absolute delight to, to welcome you to the Alaska Report, uh, Mark. It is, it's always good when I have an opportunity to sit and visit with you talking about uh, our fine um, academic institution there in, in, up, up north at the university, but also to talk to you just about anything that's on your mind. Um, we always have good conversations and, and you never disappoint. Yeah. But you are, you are, as I've mentioned, um, uh, looking to move on after a, a very distinguished um, period, 12 years now serving as the president of the University of Alaska system. Tell me where we are as a university system and what you feel we have, you have, with the fine people that you work with, what you have developed over these past dozen years that you look to as, as accomplishments um, for Alaskans and, and for our university system. Sure, I, I think um, probably the thing I'm, I'm most proud of of uh, the institution is that the university has uh, devoted themselves to being the workforce provider uh, for mm -hmm. the state of Alaska. Uh, it's just um, economics 101 that says uh, if you're a colony that wants to be a state, if you're a territory that wants to be a nation, the first thing you've got to do is you've got to substitute for imports. And Alaska has long suffered from having to import its workforce at a very, very significant cost and kind of a, uh, a stealth increase on our cost of living comes from the fact that we uh, rent so many of our folks. Now, they're perfectly wonderful people, uh, but the fact is that it is uh, cheaper to hire Alaskans, and obviously it's good for the state of Alaska. Uh, we produce about 2,400 graduates every year in the area that um, is defined by the Department of Labor in the state as Alaska's most needed jobs. Uh, we get that list directly from them. We look down that list and see to which of these might we respond uh, quickly and at the least uh, cost. How nimbly are you able to do that? Very, very nimbly. You know, the uh, university, you're very well aware of this, um, has embraced and encompassed the community college system. Mm -hmm. And community colleges are noted for their ability to respond. Uh, the rest of the faculty governance has understood that need to be able to identify a job and then move forward with getting it done in a very short period of time. I'll give you one quick example of that. Um, doing the uh, training for the operators on the North Slope, magnificent career, yep. uh, takes about two years to get through a very rigorous course, but the graduates of this, I mean, they make like eighty or ninety thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. That's a really, mm -hmm. really good investment of two years of your life. We got together with the oil companies, this is a decade ago, we got together with the oil companies and tried to figure out exactly what the curriculum ought to be. And the faculty, uh, and I thought this was uh, tremendously uh, 
insightful and uh, with, uh, with, with great uh, foresight, agreed to let us offer the first semester while they reviewed and approved the second semester, and mm -hmm. et cetera, through the thing. So they were willing mm -hmm. to work mm -hmm. with us, and uh, I'm very proud of them uh, mm -hmm. for that. So the faculty governance itself has recognized the need for uh, uh, alacrity on the, on the part of uh, responding to state needs and jobs. Well, and I know certainly when, when I was in the legislature and we were looking at a very acute shortage of, of nurses, within the state. Right. The nursing right. program has been a phenomenal success there yeah, at the university. It, it really has. We, uh, we have uh, marginally more than doubled uh, the number of nurses we've uh, put out there. And frankly, there's such a tremendous interest in the nursing uh, program. And its expansion is not possible without expanding what they call uh, certified clinical experiences. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the bottleneck. It's one of those programs that you you can't throw money at and yeah. uh, and yeah. fix it we're about the limit of uh, producing those nurses but it has enlivened such uh, interest in serving in the healthcare industry that we've been able to talk to people mm -hmm. and say we have a two-year waiting list I mean if you want to wait to be a nurse you can do that but uh, here's an opportunity to be a, a radiation technologist yeah. here here's yeah. an opportunity to be a, a health aide and really has, uh, has spread our involvement in producing a tremendous number of uh, Alaska's healthcare workers. They constitute eight out of the top 12 most needed jobs in mm -hmm. Alaska. We have uh, rented what they call travelers uh, for many, many years. Uh, and the renting of a traveler, and by the way, again, I'd have to emphasize, these are wonderful people. I mean, they've provided Alaska with excellent healthcare for uh, uh, decades. But the price of a traveler, uh, recruiting, transporting, uh, temporary housing, yep. temporary uh, a rental car, mm -hmm. usually a bonus and a salary, approaches three times the amount of money you would pay in salary to an mm -hmm. Alaskan graduate. Uh, because of that, the uh, major hospital industries have uh, contributed uh, from the beginning uh, very significant amounts. So there have been, and I, I think this is something that um, perhaps many Alaskans don't know or not aware of within the university system, is this this private partnering that's going on. Um, you mentioned the the uh, program to supply the needs for the oil field services up right. up north and and the nursing. Um, you know, ANSEP. Absolutely is uh, you know if you, why don't you why don't you speak well, about that program because it's such it's a just, successful it's a magnificent, one. Ag magnificent Alaska program. Native uh, in science and engineering. Science program. and engineering. Okay. Yeah, it's just a wonderful program, uh, and it's like so many other programs. It's uh, headed up by Herb Schroeder, just uh, mm -hmm. tremendously great guy, great great man, uh, tremendous passions uh, toward uh, allowing Alaska Natives to have the opportunity, really, to be prepared to come to college and be uh, counseled and, uh, and uh, encouraged uh, during their time at the university so they can begin to take uh, their places in some of these very, very important uh, jobs. And uh, frankly, at the same time, to uh, dismiss the myth that somehow, uh, well, Alaska Natives just can't do this. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. um, Alaska Natives who haven't been given the proper preparation can't do it, and neither can any other ethnicity you've right. ever named. So uh, it's really uh, been wonderful. And industry has uh, really embraced this. I mean, I think, frankly, uh, everything is good for them. They kind of feel good about being involved in a program uh, that uh, supports a, a minority population. And at the same time, they're getting great engineers to mm -hmm. go out and work on, uh, on uh, the operations that they have and, and will continue to have in the state of Alaska. So it's a wonderful program, tremendous uh, investments that have allowed it to happen. It simply couldn't have happened yeah. uh, from just university funds. But you know, um, the, the major oil companies have been instrumental in virtually uh, all of the progress made by the university it, to the extent that they, uh, they had under what was called a compact agreement, uh, a formula where they would give to the university a certain percentage of their mm -hmm. uh, profits uh, for the, uh, the year uh, prior. Uh, that allowed the university to have 
some seed money, some startup money, some pilot program money, the kinds of things that, that I know that you get asked for yeah. to do. Uh, and in point of fact, uh, those things have proved out over time, and we've been able to secure uh, state funding for those programs that work. But having those starting uh, a startup uh, funding um, was very instrumental in what we've Absolutely. been able to accomplish. Let's, let's talk just a minute about the, um, the, the, the student population that we see now within the <coughs> university system. One of the programs that has been phenomenally successful is the Alaska Scholars uh, Program. And I think most Alaskans now know and are familiar. I know certainly those students that are in high school looking to go on look to that program as, as their ticket to a good education. But um, let's talk a little bit about, about that program and, sure. and what it attracts to the university, but also the demographics of the students. Sure. Are, they, are they younger? Are they older? Where, uh, kind of, sure. where they're coming from? Well, I mean, just uh, across the board, <clears throat> the uh, average age of the student is, is dropping. We get more and more and more what are called classic first-time freshmen. That's mm -hmm. somebody who comes so directly right out, out of high school, school and yeah. comes up. Um, you know, 12 years ago, uh, we got a little over 40% of college brown students, and now we're sneaking right up on two-thirds on getting uh, 67%. And you did that in, we began in how long of a time period? Well, this has been... It, two, the 12 years 12 that you've years, been there. Yes, yeah. yes. That's, that's uh, pretty remarkable. Uh, much of that, uh, had to, well, it had to do with a number of things. I mean, uh, part of it is we've gotten uh, wonderful legislative support. Yeah. I will never, yeah, ever yeah. forget. And now, never, it didn't come easy. No. You had to work for it, but you did get well, that support. Well, you know, when, uh, when I look at the very first year uh, coming in there and asking for a significant increase in uh, funding following uh, 10 years of flat funding, mm -hmm. Uh, oil was $9.57 yeah. a barrel. I was there. I know you were. Yeah. And uh, you and your colleagues said, uh, okay, uh, here's some money. Let me see what mm -hmm. you can do. Mm -hmm. It was like uh, pouring uh, uh, water on a, on a dying plant. I mean, the university was uh, solid. Uh, we owe so much to the people uh, who would not let go during those, what I refer to as the time in the desert, mm -hmm. uh, would not let it fail. Uh, and those wonderful staff and faculty and researchers kept it together enough that it could respond when it was time. Uh, early on, I had just come from the Army Recruiting Command, and uh, I talked with Wendy Redman, uh, who's in essence the co-president. I mean, for all practical <laughs> purposes, I don't do anything without uh, getting uh, Wendy's counsel, guidance, and, uh, and direction. Uh, but we talked about uh, doing a scholarship program and we were trying to, we didn't know whether we wanted to do needs-based or we wanted to do a, mm -hmm. a, a kind of a merit-based. We decided on a merit-based system that we uh, called the Alaska Scholars and uh, what it did was uh, it offered an $11,000 scholarship to the top 10 percent, key phrase follows, of every high school in the state. I didn't want the top 10 percent of the ACT scores or SAT scores. I wanted the top 10 percent of every single high school and the the ultimate fruition of the Alaska Scholars Program has not yet happened. Uh, it will happen when these individuals gathered together at their state university, where you can sit in a seminar and talk to someone who comes from a lifestyle you cannot imagine. Uh, eventually, we will begin to resolve some of the seemingly intractable problems of Alaska. Uh, from friends, from classmates, mm -hmm. who've spent mm -hmm. time uh, together uh, and uh, understand things that they couldn't have understood if they hadn't met the person uh, responsible for them. Uh, that will be some years. I, I hope it's in my lifetime to see that fruition because it's been part of the dream from the uh, from the beginning. But it is something that we've seen before. Think back to. Uh, many of our current day Alaska Native leaders. Where That's did true. many of them go to school? Their common bond was, was down there in yeah. Sitka at Mount Edgecombe. Yeah, Mount Edgecombe. And, sure and, 
you know, that was just a small microcosm. But yes. your point about what you are able to do in bringing Alaskans together, uh, I think is, is absolutely spot on. It, it certainly uh, is, has got to work. Uh, I will miss uh, meeting the Alaska scholars because I went and uh, met uh, each group uh, in the southeast and uh, south central and, and in, uh, in the interior. Uh, those individuals who had been selected, they come in with their parents and mm -hmm. we uh, kind of set up booths for each of the campuses so they can come in and uh, decide. And uh, I have loved every year to kind of uh, tick this off. In the last group, I said, you know, I started this, <laughs> I started this program when you were in the first grade. <laughs> and, I've wow. been, and I've been waiting for you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. So, that's good. Uh, I'll, I'll miss not giving that... Uh, I started this before you went to school, and I've been waiting for it. Mm -hmm. But it's a beautiful thing. And what happened? What I told people was going to happen in this, because believe it or not, there was actually some resistance to this. Uh, good people who said, you know, we're Alaskans. We just like to send our kids outside. These are going to be the kids who all, already have scholarship opportunities, and we're going to disgrace ourselves because we're going to start a program, and we're going to prove we can't even give it away. And I said, you forgot the Montgomery flag poster. It says, Uncle Sam wants you. Mm -hmm. When someone knows you want them, they respond very differently. And this was a program that said, we want you. Uh, we, the entire thesis of a state university says, we as the state will supplement the cost of education so that you will select the university and then grow up to be our workforce, our leaders, and our citizens. And we're willing to subsidize that so that you will select mm -hmm. your state university as uh, the place to go. And I said, what we're missing are credible emissaries. Let's bring in these people so that people can ultimately say, wow, Martha was the smartest girl in our class, and she went there, and she came mm -hmm. back and said, it's great. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what happens. Yeah. I mean... And you're seeing that play oh, out in your increased it. enrollment, of course, in yeah. the quality and caliber of the individuals Without that are doubt. attending. I mean, it's a magnificent institution. Yeah. It's yeah. absolutely <laughs> tremendous. Uh, one of the few cases where, you know, Alaska suffers from uh, inability to uh, constitute uh, economies of scale. But here's a case where it actually works. Uh, the fact is that uh, these, uh, these individuals have the opportunity to deal with real professors, uh, excellent professors, uh, in very small classes. And uh, I tell a story, well actually I uh, enlist those who have gone out and come back because they're our greatest advertisement in the world. Uh, you know, a youngster goes out there and uh, suddenly discovers there are more people in their freshman biology class than actually live in their hometown. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they, mm -hmm. Oh mm -hmm. my gosh, and they, they talk to one of, our, uh, one of our students back here and say, Oh, gosh, I'm having a great time. The professor knows my name, and the person went outside and says, what's a professor? Mm -hmm. Because they've only met TAs yeah. for their entire time. And they come back, and the stories they tell uh, confirm what we absolutely know, that uh, the University of Alaska is a magnificent institution and uh, one that we just need to be very, very proud of. As a state. What has been your biggest point of pride in, in your 12 years there as, as president of the university? I th you know, I think it probably, um, most people would say that I would be remembered for the Alaska Scholars Program, but uh, there actually was one that's kind of under the radar that I really believe uh, is the most important thing I've done there. Uh, and it has to do with the fact that um, Skeptics of uh, a state university system will use the same exact phrase every time. I love the university, but they're sloppy with their money. The university gets a lot of money from the state. And with that lot of money comes the suspicion of uh, probably not fraud, but waste and abuse mm -hmm. and, and this mm -hmm. sort of thing. It's accountability. Mm -hmm. Uh, you, need, you need to address that. And I think first off, I said when somebody has that kind, that's a two-run homer. person says, I love the university, you get a plus from the people who love the university, but they're sloppy with their money, you get a check block from the people who are fiscally conservative, 
And here you are sitting there uh, having to defend that. Uh, we need to go out front on that. So I began a program of, uh, called Operational Reviews. And quite simply, it's what are you doing with the money? Mm -hmm. Let me see it. Uh, you got money to hire this professor. You didn't hire this professor for six months. What did you do with the salary savings? Um, tracking the money, this was a brutal thing for the institution to go through. These things used to be two full days and twice a year, and yeah. it was just agony. What has happened? Of course, they now know and anticipate the questions and, and, and the like, and they're very good at it. We know a lot about ourselves. We know a lot about uh, the money flow. We know a lot about the money distribution. We know about um, what really amounts to the, uh, the reapportionment of those funds that are left over and the carry forward funds that we talk about. Uh, and we can respond very, very quickly with uh, an entire string of, uh, of years now of accountability to any, any kind of a thing. Th that will be under the radar always, mm -hmm. uh, but it's it's a defensive stance that's going to put us long term in great. Well, it is. Shape. It's an incredibly important part of the operations. If you can't um, operate and manage with a level of efficiency, the 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 dollars that you receive, your state and federal dollars, and and can't be accountable then it makes it difficult to gain that trust that you need to, to continue to advance a, a stellar institution. Precisely. Um, so it, it, it is, a, but it's not something that um, until there's a, a, a negative issue, uh, quite honestly, most people don't stay that focused to what is going on. So it, it, it's an important part of it. No, it really is. It you, know, you know, early on, uh, and this was, it seems a bit dramatic, I, I frankly didn't think I had any other choice. Uh, I was given uh, $400,000 by the legislature to begin a, a workforce uh, mm -hmm. program that happened to be in the healthcare uh, arena. Mm -hmm. um, and it was kind of uh, our advisory group there, you know, uh, that we dealt with in the, in the health care community, uh, sort of said, wow. So you get the money? Um, well, you know, I think we'd rather do this. Uh, hmm. I said, you can't. I told them we were going to mm -hmm. do this. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, but it's all health care. Uh, I went back the next year uh, to the legislature, and I said, you know, I told you I was going to do this program. Uh, as it turns out, uh, consulting with our advisory group, we decided uh, it wouldn't be a good one. So here's your $400,000 back. Now, it had if, to have been the first time the legislature got money back. Well, they, it, it did cause a pause, mm -hmm. uh, for sure. And But, you know, I said, now, if you don't have any idea where to use that, I, I do. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so they said, okay, well, just yeah. take it back and, yeah. you know, go, yeah. go yeah. do it. So uh, it worked. But you didn't have any. If you want to stress accountability, you better demonstrate accountability mm -hmm. or the whole thing is. Uh, At all levels. Not only within your operations, but accountability of, of your students and how they are doing and how they are progressing and, and how successful they are. Yeah. Talk a little bit about um, the graduation rates that we're seeing, because I know that that uh, that's a statistic that makes you smile. Well, it, the, the, the cumulative graduations uh, make me smile a lot. The graduation rate is something that has gone up, but uh, it's the kind of thing... Uh, that I, I call schizophrenic statistics. You know, you can demonstrate how much you've gone up. Even the even the one that uh, that sounds so wonderful, gone from forty percent of our uh, um, college-bound students go to the university to almost sixty-seven percent. You know what that means? It means we're last in the United States by still, less. Yeah, we're still last. Yep, yeah. Hawaii's about seventy-one. We're at sixty-seven. Boy, uh, that that that. It surprises me. I thought that we had made significant enough gains that we were no longer in last place. We're no longer that. Now, we are no longer in last place in terms of graduation rate. That was the yeah. number of people who actually come uh, to the university. Um, and there's lots of explanations for that. And it isn't just the nature of Alaskans. Many of us are, are, are imports. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you are born there, but you aren't you the first senator who's ever one. been elected yeah. who, who was actually born there. So, mm -hmm. so there's a maturation, I think, that has to happen in the state. It's, 
people still want to send their son or daughter out to where they were. The outside you know, adventure, sure. yeah. Uh, we have uh, relatively few uh, institutions of higher learning. You know, we're another mm -hmm. state, I mean, like California, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. we got 400 or some absurd number of uh, colleges, universities. So, pretty hard to tell people why you don't want to go to school in California. I mean, there's every flavor and uh, every, uh, everything you could imagine. Uh, so I'm not sure we'll get you know, much, much higher than um, maybe three quarters sometime. We might mm -hmm. get up to that. The graduation rate is, uh, is much more difficult because uh, the metrics of it, uh, you kind of, somebody comes in, how many degrees do you have in six years? Open admission institution embraces the community college role. I mean, many of my students don't want a four-year degree. Yeah, they're looking. They came for the two-year degree. Yeah. They came for the one-year yeah. uh, workforce certificate. So, the, the, so it's kind of tough. The kind to, of national statistics. Yeah. What we can kind of boil it down to is say, okay, how many of these classic first-time freshmen come directly out of high school, go and want to be, um, want to graduate in four years? in an open admission institution. Mm -hmm. See? I mean, if you let me uh, say you have to have a 1,400, in the old system, 1,400 SAT score, we'd graduate 90% of them. Uh, yeah. Yeah. When we do those, we compare very nicely with open admission institutions. Well, you do, you do a phenomenal job, have done so for, for 12 years. Um, the university is, is going to miss your leadership. I certainly will, and I know many, many Alaskans will. We wish you um, incredible success in your future endeavors. I know uh, uh, at least uh, a good portion of them will involve fishing. And, I want to uh, catch a fish as big as uh, yours. You That's know, what I want to do. <laughs> it's a challenge for you then. <laughs> Go out and do it and I will be happy to, to do a side-by-side -side of our fish on the walls. But I, I, I truly, I, I value your leadership. Alaskans um, greatly appreciate all that you have contributed, not only in your capacity as the leader of our university system, but your, your many years of public service uh, through our military. You are an incredible Alaskan, one of our finest, you and your family, and we're just delighted that you have chosen to, to call Alaska home, but I wish you all the best in, in your next endeavors. And, and again, thank you for your leadership and for giving us this time on the Alaska Report. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, delighted that you have uh, been with us this afternoon and look forward to you joining us on the next edition of the Alaska Report. Thank you.